You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Joining me today is David Erfley, my friend over at JuniorMinerJunkie.com to talk about gold, silver, the precious metals market, and specifically the precious metals junior. I'm Bill Powers. It's Mining Stock Education. Thanks for tuning in. And David, thanks for joining me again. Now, I want to start off with with, uh, something that you wrote to your subscribers. Uh, Oftentimes coming out of the summer, we look at seasonality and we're looking forward to more buying in the juniors come September. But even though a lot of these juniors are historically oversold and could be argued that they're undervalued right now, you're a warning that perhaps there could still be a sell off in September into the fall. Can you elaborate this uh, expectation or possible expectation? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, you know, the the sector has been so it's, it's been so depressed. You know, um, so many people have ran away from the sector. Um, and, you know, when you have the world's largest gold mining company, Newmont Corporation, trading like a penny stock. You know, it, it's it's going to keep generalist investors out of this sector. Um, you know, Newmont lost half its value after hitting a all time high in a little over three months. Um, so, basically, um, when you, you, we we had, we had a capitulation phase that, that that appeared like it had ended. I mean, GDXJ was the most oversold that had, it had been on many levels since the 2015 bottom, which was like a generational opportunity to get into to, into juniors. And, you know, we had that huge move after that. Um, in relation to the uh, to the stock market, you know, the HUI to S and P ratio, it's trading at levels it was in 2015 in 2018 and briefly in 2020 when we had the spike low you had like you know an eyelash opportunity to get to 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 get in really cheap there but basically what i'm saying is 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 the is the mining stocks are ridiculously oversold on so many historic base levels um but you know we we still got this sword of damocles hanging over us in, in the stock market you know i basically told my subscribers uh uh, uh, last week that, that I a week before last that I was looking to to short the stock market as a hedge for my uh, portfolio for my junior portfolio because basically um, you know the S and P is it, it was was reaching you know a, a technical resistance area where it was it would become an obvious short because basically what's has happened here is 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 the S and P has retraced fifty percent of, it, of of its of its move lower. You know, and while it was while that was happening, the gold stocks were bouncing in unison with the stock market. So for four weeks, the S and P was bouncing. Uh, you know, cryptos were bouncing. Uh, the gold stocks were bouncing. So it's natural that okay, the the, the the stock market is set to roll over. So other things are probably set to roll over with the stock market as well. But 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 the caveat is is the gold stocks have already crashed, right? So in 2008, you know, uh, the, the gold stocks began to move lower ahead of a market crash. And then by the time um, in, in 2000, uh, October 2008 rolled around, we had a V bottom in gold stocks while the general market continued to crash into, into March of the following year. And gold stocks were rebounding and going higher when that was taking place. So basically what's happening here now is, is fears of recession have come back now. And um, the, the gold stocks bounced with, with the S&P. Um, and it was also on short covering. But now uh, reset, recession fears have, have come back now. So I, I, I think the bears are going to have a really hard time again of trying to break that 1700 level, you know, that 1700 level has been, has, has been tested a few times over the past few years. And each time it's got down there, we saw strong buying come in. So the gold stocks were, were starting to, to tell us that, Hey, the bears are going to, are, are going to shoot for that stop run at 1675 again. And if, if they're successful, then we're going to have a final clean out in, in gold and it could hit gold stocks again. But, but basically, the gold stocks are already trading as if as if gold is trading below fourteen hundred. I mean, the last time the GDX and GDXJ were trading at these levels, 
the gold price was attempting to break out of a six year base at, four, at below 1400. And then when it finally did, you know, we had that huge move up that, you know, that's what happens with this sector. You know, it, the pendulum swings too far in both directions. You know, they always go up higher than they should. And then when they correct, they go down lower than they should. And it's up to us to basically, you know, capture as many gains as we as we can, you know, when it when it overshoots to the upside and then have enough cash on the bottom when it overshoots to the downside to be able to pick up these high quality juniors like right now that are trading at ridiculously low levels. So basically um, I've got, a, I took my cash in my account that I had, that I had left. I had about a 20% cash position and much and most of it is now uh, in a, in a three times short, the ETF uh, three times short, the S and P 500 ETF. And I put that on um, as soon as the, the, the S&P 500 back tested uh, its 200 day moving average. And it has started to roll over now. And what you, what you what two bearish things you're really seeing now on the S&P and the NASDAQ is you're seeing, you're, you're seeing uh, bearish island reversals on the daily charts of both those indexes. And, you know, the Fed is coming up with their, with their basically uh, um, policy meeting at uh at jackson hole that's that, that's kind of it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a policy meeting you know where 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 they, where they get together and they talk about you know monetary policy and you know uh the fed chairman jerome powell is going to come out friday morning with his with his speech and um it's it's basically going to be about economic policy and that that's the title and uh, he's basically going to come out and you know and uh, and wax more hawkish and um, while while the while big money traders and fund managers don't start to come back until after um, Labor Day weekend, so you know this short covering rally it looks like it's run its course. Um, so you know a good trade right now would be it is what I'm in right now is short the stock market and still long a lot of these juniors that are that are that are deeply oversold and very cheap. But you do take periodically, if you like something, you do take a new position in a junior minor and you always look at fundamentals. And that's at times like this, you've taught your subscribers, just if you like the fundamentals of an individual junior, you can take a stab at it because it's sometimes unpredictable whether it's going to go up or down in the near term with these juniors, right? Oh, especially now in the dog days of summer where there's just no volume, there's no interest. Um, you know, a lot of these things are, are, are making huge moves with hardly any volume at all. There's just no interest at all, which is why, you know, when the interest comes back, you see these huge moves in these stocks because it doesn't take much to, to move them in either direction. And when when the interest comes back, when that flip, when that switch gets flipped back to on, um, you don't have much time. You don't want to be chasing. You want to be you want to be in position before that takes place. So. That's the good thing about what's happening right now is you've got all this time. You know, there is no, there is no V bottom happening here. This is an accumulative bottom. That's what's great about accumulative bottoms, but there, it's difficult. You have to have strong stomach and you have to, and you have to buy the, you have to buy the fishing lines and something that, that you know, you've got on a watch list and you're like, okay, this is what I want to pay. Wow. It's even cheaper than, than what I want to pay. I got to pull the trigger. And, you know, if you're doing so with cash, you know, and you're not doing it in a margin account, which, you know, that's just ridiculous to have margin in this in this sector. There's no need for one. And for another, it's just super dangerous. So, um, you know, you just have to have cash and patience for the for, for the trade to work out. And, you know, if you, you take a look at the history of this sector, you know, if you when you're when you see the when you see the GDX to, to S&P ratio trading at this level, it was down at this level in late 2015 junior sector, you know, the gold sector, gold mining sector took off in early 2016. It was at this level in 2018, Fed switch policy, stock, gold stocks took off. You know, you had five to 10 times the moves in a lot of these, in a lot of these stocks. Same thing happened in 2020, but it was a V shape. You know, you had like a, a day to do it. <laughs> so now you've got months to do it. And um, I think there's one, there's, there's, there's one thing I'm certain of. I'm certain that the gold stocks will bottom if they haven't already bottom this year. I just don't know what that level is going to be when it finally, when they finally do bottom, um, you know, I mean, you could, and, and I think it hinges on the stock market 
um, having another panic sell-off. If there's another panic sell-off in the stock market, then yes, gold stocks can go lower because they're stocks. Uh, but if it's just a gradual move lower, uh, I think you're going to see safe haven buying coming into coming into gold and and more and especially in, in the juniors, which are deeply deeply oversold. Dave, you said either last time or the time before when you were on the show that insiders are buying the junior mining stocks, but retail is selling. Have there been any patterns since we last talked or what have you observed with insiders buying that you like? I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing the insiders buying a lot of these companies, a lot of these stocks. You know, there's, there's one that I alerted my subscribers to that I purchased, you know, you know, you know, my modus operandi is I research. I have first, I have, a, I have a stock on a watch list for a long time. And um, I keep watching fundamentals. I keep watching insider buying. I keep looking for that sign as to when is the best time to get in. And a lot of times it really doesn't matter where the, where the, where we are at in the cycle. Uh, but, but, but there's, there was one stock that, that, that I've watched for a long time. And usually it's one that I had missed on the way up in the previous cycle. Right. So I've got this watch list and there's a, there's a few of them on there that I missed. The first time around, like, yo, I missed that. I'm just going to put on a watch list and wait for it to come back because they always do. So um, this one particular one, um, I know uh, a, a, a legendary billionaire mining magnate had a huge position in it. And I saw him purchasing, I mean, huge blocks, like $5 million in the open market in this stock. He already had like a 12% position and he upped it to 14% and he did it in the open market. So I'm like, okay, this guy's a lot smarter than I am. He's putting a lot more of his money into this stock. So I better, you know, take advantage of it and, and alert my subscribers to it, you know, do a full due diligence, detailed uh, company report on it, which is what I do before I purchase a stock and send it to my subscribers. And then when I send it to them, we try, we all try to get in at kind of like the same price. And this one was a little less liquid than others on the, on the, uh, on the U S OTC and it just gotten a, a QTX OTC listing. So the liquidity had started to pick up, but there was plenty of, there was plenty of room for all of us to get in pretty much at the same price. And the thing is, is you can now buy it for, for like 40% cheaper than this mining magnate bought, bought it recently, you know, with $5 million of his capital and his, it is his, cash cost for his entire position is 40% less right now. So you can get it for a lot cheaper than he paid for it. And that's that I see that uh, in a lot of these companies, you know, I mean, you've heard the rig realism, you know, you go with the, you go with, 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 with the, uh, the serially successful, you know, mining entrepreneurs that have, that have made so much money in the past, but you got to do it at the right time. You know, a lot of these guys, they get in so much cheaper than we do. And it's rare that you can get in cheaper than they do. Dave, now yeah. the, the counterpoint, the devil's advocate, because I see a lot of these comments in the, in the YouTube. They're like, well, listen, five million bucks for this billionaire. That's like coffee money. OK, so that's life changing for me if I had five million. But for him, he could lose it and not care. So that's right. That's a counterpoint I see, by the way, when they when someone points absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know, okay. Absolutely. If it's someone like Eric Sprott, you got to be weary because he takes a bazooka approach. Right. He pretty much buys so many different things he's got you know he's got so much money in the sector he buys so many different things but when it's certain other of these guys that i know that 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 they're more they're more selective and they take these huge positions in the companies that they really that they really uh, feel have a, a, a you know huge prospects those are the ones that, that I follow more, you know, sure. It's nice to see Eric's brought buying, but it's like, what isn't he buying, you know? So um, yeah, it's, but it's, you know, there's so many other factors and you, and patience is the big one, you know, because, because we don't, we don't know how far the stock market is much lower. The stock market is going to go here. And if it's, if it's going to take uh, gold stocks a little farther down with it, but uh, I do know that historically they're so undervalued in relationship to gold, in relationship to the stock market, in relationship to so many things, and there's just no interest in the sector. And when you take a look at the at the bullish mining percentage index, and it's back below 11 again, you know, anytime it's below 20 percent, that's always a great time to start accumulating and um, accumulate with confidence, cash, and patience. Last question, Dave, you mentioned Newmont's trading like a junior uh, mining stock. So is that attractive to you? Newmont, Barrick, 
Equinox Gold? I mean, would you take a stab? It's at- funny, you know. I have an I have I have an IRA account, and I said to my I say to myself, you know, when in this IRA account, it's like I'm not going to invest in mining companies because I've got, you know, I've got in my in my junior account, I've got so much. I've got so much money invested, right? I'm like, no, I'm not going to bother investing in my SEP IRA and the mining companies because it's, I've already got the, the risk in, in my regular account. So, but when I saw Newmont do what it did and paying a 5% dividend at this price after being at a, at a, at a, at a, at an all time high just three months earlier, I had to allocate some to my, to my, my IRA. So I bought some Newmont in my IRA, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so yes, I mean, uh, every once so in a while. So did you break one of your own rules? Cause you told me. I you're, did. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I did, but I backed it up also with a huge short position in my, I've got a huge short position in my, in my, uh, mining account, mm-hmm. my, 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 my JM, my junior minor junkie uh, stock trading account and in my IRA account, because uh, it's just, it's just so obvious to me that, uh, the, the, that the stock market is about to have another huge leg down. All right. Well, we will leave it at that. David's website is juniorminerjunkie.com. That's junkie with a Y. Dave, thanks for coming on this month and sharing your insights. Oh, absolutely. I always enjoy talking to you.